Sonic Talk. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Sonic Talk. This is episode 576, recorded today on Wednesday. It's the 15th of May. That's right, folks. And we're all back from Superbooth. And in fact, in a very rare occurrence, Ooh. we've all been to Superbooth as well. So we've got a bumper panel this week just because um, I have with me... Uh, Jim from Ear Monkey Music, who uh, you might have seen for the sound from some of the sounds demos. Your first trip to uh, to a super booth, right? My first trip to Europe altogether. Yeah. So, so yeah, a lot of firsts there. Yeah, I got. It's been great. Berlin was great. Um, my first time in the UK. So and, yeah, a lot of stuff. Awesome. Uh, and Jim, uh, Jim was doing some of the sound demos. You might have seen there was uh, the uh, Matriarch. The uh, what did you what did you do? The matriarch, matriarch, the super six, um, the uh, summit. The, the words start going out of your head after you've done yeah. all these things. Oh yeah, the, the uh, peak summit, and also uh, the the nonlinear lab C fifteen, which is quite interesting. C fifteen, well. the new little uh, SH one hundred one based uh, superlative SB one. And the Moog one as well, I think you did, yeah. yeah. Which I think are now all online. Um, So, yes, well, let's let's say hello to everybody else as well. We've also got uh, Mr. Dave Spears, who was also at Superbooth as well. In fact, Dave, (laughs) I was thinking... Well, I saw you there, and uh, it was great. We we hung out. Was it Thursday or Friday night? I forget now, because it it all blurs a bit, but... uh, You... We figured out that we hadn't seen you at a trade show for almost double digits, right? Probably, yeah. And I, it was a weird one for us because obviously there was a, we, we stopped so, so we still sell into Sweetwater and JR shop in America, uh, but we kind of stopped the whole you know we just kind of do direct now. So having done twenty plus years of NAM and Frankfurt, I was sort of fatigued, uh, and also the expense. You know, Messer in particular had got mad money for hotels and stuff, and I'm not a huge fan of flying. So yeah, I just kind of haven't gone. I obviously did uh, Synthfest and did your thing uh, in November. Uh, and then I was offered the opportunity to go on an all-expenses-paid trip. In fact, both Chris and I were. Uh, courtesy of some work we've done on a particular synthesizer. Ah. So, uh, yeah, I was kind of like, yeah, let's do this. And what was amazing was just seeing <laughs> so many old friends and good people again. It was just like it was a complete joy. You know, people we probably hadn't seen for, you know, 10 years who we've known for like 25 odd uh it was brilliant yeah really good show excellent well we'll come back to that in a little bit while we've when we've done the rounds uh we've also got uh mr div kid ben who i think you got nam thraxed or what are we we're going to call it booth thrax or bo- I, we're trying to think booth of a name thrax, for su- super thrax super thrax that <laughs> sounds good i like the sound of that that's a good one so you uh, gaz as well got it a little bit but uh, you, like like me and your team, were running around like nutters, and it's intense. There's just not enough time. It's got a bit too big to, to be able to do, even in three days. It needs for us to do it justice. You probably, you probably felt the same, do you think? An extra day, or is it good enough? Um, I aren't sure how manufacturers would feel with an extra day, but for us, yeah, I mean, we did around 50 videos. I'm sure you know you probably nearly doubled that with your team and, and the way you work the event. But even then, there's around 250 booths. So it's just it's impossible to get around it all. Um, I'd like another day. I'd like a press day. Um, yeah. Because getting around everyone, you know, trying to get everything on the Saturday afternoon, the Friday afternoon, it's just hectic. Um, and just... The, all those added minutes of just going up to people and I always feel really rude, almost tapping them on the shoulder going, can we do that video we spoke about? And they're having to cut off conversations where we kind of work our way in with a camera and audio cables. I'd like another day. Uh, a press day would be very good. Um, I'm not sure if it was on the end how well it would go down. There's a lot of sore heads by kind of Saturday morning. Yeah. So maybe maybe set up day and press day, something like that. Yeah, I'll press afternoon even. Yeah, I, I think uh, you're right yeah. there. Because the, uh, I spoke to Andreas Schneider, the, uh, the, the the guy behind it, and he was saying he didn't want to do Sunday because he wanted to give people a day off before going back to work. So if it went anywhere, it would have to go at the beginning. But yeah, it's it was taken on board. But I mean, these things just, you know... It's, it, it's a new show. I mean, it's just, it's hard to imagine. It's it's only fourth year, and how big it's become. It's incredible, really, isn't it? 
really astonishing. Yeah. Um, and also Mr. Gaz Williams, who was uh, on our team. <laughs> You've probably seen him on multiple videos so far. I think we're up to about 72 now. There's going to be, and there are more coming. I've got another six. Oh, yeah. I've got more to go. I think Andy's most yeah. are, are up there. I've got a few more. So, yeah, you got failed, yeah. didn't you? Oh, big time. I've been there. I've, I'm, I'm about 50% at the moment, if proper or, or less. Uh, but I lost two last two days have been totally bed bound and talking to Kim Bjorn earlier who um the great author of the push turn move and uh patch and tweak and great lovely man but he's got exactly the same symptoms so I you know I'm, I'm curious to see how many of us uh, I was thinking of super, super flu or uh oh super flu yeah that sounds good super thrax <laughs> So I think Ben got super thrax. Yeah. It's evil. It is a evil. I haven't been so wiped out for ages. Um, but uh, yeah, but it's all worth it though because what an what an amazing event. And as you say, it was just ah oh gosh the amount of things we just didn't cover. Uh, and thinking about it, going, oh I didn't even get to see that. Didn't get to see that. Didn't get to see that. And um, yeah, gosh, and we were flat out weren't we the whole time yeah totally so you know so and, and there's a massive amount of stuff we're going to talk about on the show isn't it because there's yeah well i mean cool, we're, we're going to struggle in a cool similar uh, similarly i would imagine <laughs> um, i just want to say yeah. a shout out i think battery operated orchestra are in the chat room who uh, were also hey. at super booth and uh, hey. jolly fun we have we've I've, i'm sure between mm. us we've all got jolly fun stories of hanging out with them and uh, having a lot of fun bridget and uh, chris we had a great time we went out for a meal <laughs> on the last night and uh, and we I, we finally made it to one of the clubs i went to sea base and uh, i really enjoyed Yay. it actually because i got there and it's quite mellow and it was wasn't yeah. what i expected at all like literally sort of down the river behind a behind a shed and then through a gap in the fence almost in it but it was an amazing <laughs> place so yeah i enjoyed all of that it is. i think next year we're going to get a hotel closer to mitter so we can actually be a bit in all of that because it like jim you got a hotel <laughs> close by so you were there pretty much every night right oh yeah i was out i was there and if you go out with gas just be prepared to stay a while yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but you didn't. You didn't yeah, yeah, I think. And Chris and Bridget, they just kept, you know. But they keep going. It's just such a great group of people, though. You just didn't. You didn't want to go. You wanted to keep staying. Oh wait, we've got one here. Um, hold on a sec. I'm just going to run this one. This the Booth Bonic Plague. What do you think? Booth of that? Bonic Plague. <laughs> Booth Bonic Ooh, Plague. That's pretty good. It's a that's bit. That's one. perhaps a little. Yeah, that's kind of. That's quite. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Well, uh, where where do we start? I mean, I suppose the thing is, where do we start? I guess I guess in some ways it might be worth starting with with the people who haven't been before because we've been before and it's and it's about the gear. So, Dave, I mean, you hadn't been before, but you hadn't been to a trade show before. I don't know what you were expecting. I mean, because you must have had a lot of feedback and a lot of people saying, "Oh, you like it? It's great." You know, it's not like other trade shows. I mean, it's not really a trade show, is it? Would you call it a trade show? No, no. I, I think what I really I mean, like I say, I used it more of a kind of people thing. Obviously, we were there with Novation, so Summit was a kind of focus for us. But um, other than that, I kind of used it more to catch up with people and people that we've worked with for, you know, hundreds of years. Because we all rem work remotely, you know, it's only occasions like this that we get to meet. But no, I think for me, in fact, I was talking to somebody about it earlier. It's on the border now of becoming a big show. But what I loved about it was... I was talking to Michelle Moog about it. Um, she joined us for breakfast on our last day. And um, it's going, there's so many booths that are kind of back to that, you know, men in sheds, blokes, you know, people on kitchen tables kind of doing stuff and then presenting it. I mean, the amount of, I mean, some it wasn't, you know, isn't entirely finished, uh, complete. And when I saw the Super 6 uh, video that you guys did, again, you know, he had, didn't have any effects on it. So, but it's just this kind of, I don't know, it's a, it felt like a, a happening more than a yeah. Kind I of would trade agree. Show. Uh, so I mean, aside from the actual uh, Super Six part of it, did you get a chance to actually see anything? Was there a highlight of the show? I mean, it, you know, Summit could be a highlight of the show as well. That's fine. I'm, I'm trying because I've got a whole load of videos lined up that I sort of feel like we should perhaps kind of show a little bit about what was going on. So, you know, for you, Dave, was there something that really stood out or surprised you gear-wise that you got a chance to see for the first time? There were a few things that kind of made me look and look at it and go wow that was insane uh i can't remember the name of it but that tone wheel four voice oh motor the motor synth thing. yeah let the me motor synth i just thought wow that's 
insane but it sounded amazing and then obviously we talked about that drum machine a couple of weeks ago didn't we which i went straight you know went went straight over and tried so that and obviously summit i mean for me summit was just an amazing experience because it was nice to be uh it was not i know a lot of the work that's gone into it so it was nice to be there for when it was announced and the buzz that was going around and everyone you know just worked on it was I mean, they're, they're there we go. There's the drum machine. There's the drum machine. That was, yeah. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. I think they're going to sell tons of those just from that, uh, well, from the podcast a couple <laughs> of weeks ago, out from people being there. I mean, pretty much everybody I know went, I've got to get one of those. Yeah, absolutely. And the summit, of course, is beautiful. I think Jim did a, uh, I've got it here somewhere. I think we've got a, play, a sounds only video that Jim did because uh, this, what's really, because we don't get time to do all of this stuff. So I imagine some of these patches must have been yours. I don't, Jim, were these all patches that you made or were you just I didn't flipping know. presets? I was flipping, I was just going through presets. Very moody shot there, I like that. I was uh, mostly working with it in split mode. Yeah, nice. And that seemed to be a big success. Obviously, Novation uh, were a sponsor of the show, so uh, that was great to, for them to actually have a decent product out there as well. I mean, I say decent. I mean, most of their stuff's good anyway, so it's good that... We're, you know, but it seems to be very polysynth heavy as well. There was a lot of that going on. Um, and I suppose uh, for you, Jim, you know, highlights for the show, of the show for you, because, I mean, this is a, a very... You, you've been to Nam, which is a very different experience, but this is very tightly focused. It is. It's very concentrated. That's the one thing I liked about it. I mean, you go to some of the big... You go to Nam, and there's people selling tubas next to the synthesizers and there's none of this this is all synthesizers and and you know i focus more on the uh, keyboard instruments and this was really great because there were so many you know polysynths that and that's kind of where i tend to gravitate and uh, even just talking about the summit it, i have a peak so i was familiar with i'm familiar with the peak but the summit introduces so much new uh, stuff just being able to do layers and splits and 16 voices and you just feel it just kind of uh really is inviting to get you in and makes you want to play it that's that's what i look for in in a synthesizer is do i feel like playing it do i want to keep playing it and there were several things there that really just kind of pulled me in and i just didn't want to stop that's why there's that's why the that's why the sounds only videos are like you know 17 minutes long <laughs> and i even edited half of them out <laughs> yeah that's cool actually we got the because uh, th this is the super six which was also another big introduction and like you said dave there's very little uh you know it, was, it wasn't actually working fully properly but but it had a real uh, it, i mean there's loads of stuff in here but again it, no, none of the effects work i don't i haven't watched the whole oh this had quite a Juno feel, filter to it as well, I think, which was kind of cool. But, I mean, it's really nice to see, because I know, Gaz, you've been working on that, you know, or not working on it, but uh, exposed to it and sort of talking to them a I've while. I've been consulting on and, it for a last year. And it was yeah. so nice, for the, for for because we, you know, George, I spoke to George afterwards, and I said, you know, and I said, oh, I think mm. that'll do well. And then he was yeah. like, I can't read the comments. Because, you know, they can be very <laughs> harsh, particularly when something's not yeah. finished. And, you know, it's not going to be a cheap instrument, so... No. So... But overall, lots of very positive, uh, positive sounds, uh, uh, positive thoughts about it, which is nice. You know, didn't get thrashed. Yeah. No, I mean they were. You know, it was touch and go whether it was going to be, you know, finished enough to to show it. It really. So they worked so hard in the last week or so to to get it to you know to get it there. Um, yeah, and I was absolutely delighted to see how well it had, uh, how well it's been received. Um, George, George Hearn is a very smart cookie, actually, and he's, uh, you know, one of the things that's really impressed me with George over the development of this synth is uh, he's been just working on the very tiniest detail. He's been, you know, most of the time, it, well, in fact, this was the first time I'd actually seen it acting, uh, you know, it actually polyphonic as well. Uh, he's been really just trying to get the fundamentals, the very fundamental tone to sound right. Uh, and working really, really hard on, on that. So the basic building blocks, just getting it just right. And another thing that George has been really kind of, really dedicated about with this synth is to make sure that every switch is as beautiful quality as possible, that everything feels like it's, uh, you know, like a proper instrument, it's built to last. Uh, and. I think the comments and other and some people I was talking to there who tried it out were saying this. So I, I think that the message is kind of getting through. And I thought, you know, 
you know, really well done to them, really, for focusing on probably the most important aspects of a keyboard that's essentially designed for live, you know, yeah. for live use. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, yeah, and it's gone, it's gone down really well. And of course, this synth is, is the, uh, has had the magic touch of Axel Hartmann, hasn't it, yeah, as well? Yeah, that's right, a bit which, of industrial uh, design there, you can tell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I don't know if you can tell. Is there? A, does he have a look? I suppose you know that, no. that's the point. Well. You don't, do you? You you kind of have what you want. Um, I, I'll come back to you again in a sec, Jazz, because I, I just come, come. I don't want. I know you're both feeling ill, so I've got to keep talking to you in case you start nodding <laughs> off both of you. So I'm gonna. I, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm performing. So Ben, for you, I mean, I know you cover a lot more of the modular stuff, which is something that I'm not focusing. Ed did it for us, and I, I mean, one thing that he found is like. At the end of it, he's almost slightly mad. It's like, if I have to see another oscillator, I think I'm going to kill myself. You know, there is there is an aspect to that because you, there's so much of it and the density of it and the kind of the the uh, the differences between some of the things is quite subtle. You have to be deep into it. Um, how was it for you? I mean, did you find you had enough or you kind of do you manage to maintain that healthy enthusiasm or does it wear you out like the rest of us? And if so, what did you what did you find the most exciting? There you go. There's a bunch of things. I thought, to you, was going. Going to say, I thought you were going to say what what was the one thing that wore you down the most? Um, well, you can <laughs> no, that if you like. That's a great question. <laughs> Wish I'd thought of it. Um, Me. No, it's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> It's um, it's really kind of motivating as a show, and it's the people. And I've seen Dave's post uh, on Facebook about the people. It does have a little bit of a trade show vibe. The first one at the Funk House was definitely, you know, like being at Woodstock kind of thing. But it's still got that right vibe about it. There's no escaping um, the amount of modular makers, and I think that maybe puts them all on not a hard sell. That's unfair to say, but they're a little bit more aware of they've got units to shift. Whereas previous years, I feel like it just almost a, they didn't care. They just wanted to talk to people. But that's in no way a, a bad thing or a kind of over, overall judgment. Um, just going back to just before the event, we saw the summit uh, the day before. Uh, playing some of Dave's presets and unlike Jim I just lived in kind of just single uh, Tombra mode I didn't go into any kind of split stuff at all it sounds fantastic um, I was really impressed with that piece of kit even just breaking out FM controls they encourage you at least to turn them up even if you turn them back down and you'd find a nice little kind of corner of the synth you've maybe not found in a mod matrix before oh, oh. I was really impressed yep. Wow, oh, <laughs> the, the, the cold takes it's all the uh, Namfrax, Boofrax. Um, I think it's the Curtis chips being available, both officially and kind of unofficially in a couple of places. Yeah. They were used in everything, it seemed. So, but it was nice to see because I, I believe the I mean, my electrical and component knowledge is minimal, but I believe most of the work's done in the chip. All the vault proctive tracking's done, all the FM scaling's done, all the waveforms are broken out. You're not having to build wave shapers to get triangles from squares and so on. Um, and there was a lot of that this year. Way too much to cover. Oh, we're getting we're getting Sorry. some bandwidth issues. Uh, that that well well uh, but sequences. Oh, there he is. Sorry, Ben, you're kind of uh, you've broken up. You've paused, and and you, we've got you back now. Yeah, I, that's a really okay. interesting point though about the filters being available. In fact, um, I I think I met it was a guy, guy called Dan. I gave him my card. He gave me his card. Dan Peer. Uh, what was his name? I forget now, but I had a look. I had a, um, I checked out, checked out, and he was, you know, they're making. Yeah, you're right. Making those things available means that people can focus on some of the other aspects, you know, like the GUI and whatnot. But there was so much modular. Um, I mean, as it is, you know, it's Schneider's loud, and why wouldn't it be an Alex Four? You know, that's what that's what the whole thing came about. That's what Super Movie is for. But it did feel like also there was a lot more polyphonic action going on this year, um, and, that, and I yeah. wonder if that's down to the. Uh, I, I don't know if anyone saw this. This was announced on the. Uh, the the last day at three o'clock. Did you see this? I'll just play a little bit quickly. MFB booth and yeah. uh, something brand new on on the last day of the show. Or, right? Yeah, exactly. It was in the last minute, but it's a it's a prototype, so it's not finished. But we expect that in this year they finish this uh, eight voice polyphonic synthesizer. It includes three VCOs, two filters, three envelopes, and two LFOs plus a display and you can store all them. Uh, the yeah, that was pretty. That was a bit of a surprise there. And it was really funny because you've got the guys from Novation who went, what? 
And the guys from Modal were going, oh, wait a minute. And the guys from Uno were going, hold on a minute. There's another shit. And it's analog. What? <laughs> so it was a real, real curveball for them. But I think, I mean, it's still early days. They're not going to be ready till next year. But three VCO analog synth, uh, polysynth, that's kind of, that, that. did you see that one, Ben? Yeah. I mean, it didn't, it wasn't voiced or anything. No, but. no, I missed it. But it, this idea of kind of either doing more, well, there's, there's a few ways to go about it in, from what I can tell. You either just use the Curtis chip and make a simple oscillator and it's maybe smaller and cheaper because there's little R&D to do. Um, or you add features or you just stack a load of them in. Now, I didn't see it at the event. I don't think the company were there, but it was in someone else's, stand you know if you want to see this it's at our friends at booth whatever whatever um but there's a new oscillator called the demon core which isn't that big but it's 16 dcos kind of juno style digitally controlled analog oscillators where all 16 are addressable via midi in about 14 hp i think so it's not very big or it's um four voices or four groups of four voices by cv so it's there's a ton of kind of power coming in to your rack i think just that, just a simple way of going, here's 16, I don't know, saw waves or squares or big unison stacks or chords. And MIDI as well on mini jacks is nice to see. It's a nice, yeah, simple there's a way lot of keeping that, there is. it. Yeah, I saw, I'll tell you what I did see, and I don't think I've done the video for it yet. There was a guy in the room that we were in last year uh, that got opened up and turned into a booth. And he made, you know, there, there, there's also these kind of, I don't know what, that sort of size DSP core units for polysynth action so there's quite a lot of polysynths coming into your right but his what he'd done is he created an internal bus so you got the, the dsp thing and then all the modules for controlling the individual aspects of that synth were just controllers so the idea is you have this sort of massive powerful polysynth with all of the individual modules and you control them via via the controllers and the idea that there's an internal busing system that kind of it opens. I mean, I don't think it's going to work as a whole thing in itself because it's quite expensive. But that concept of maybe bringing in polyphony portability and you'd be able to use your rack cases, but also you breaking out the control aspect so that you can then control maybe other things and also getting recall. I don't know. I think I got the impression because you, you, when you look at some of those guys' sets, I talked to Richard Devine and he. I look. I was trying to look at his modular to see what was going on, and it was literally just you know a pile of cables on top of a flat box and you just with tiny little sort of windows of faders so it's like yeah i can turn that but i didn't just think that's that is so i mean you know i know it's the core of it but it's so ludicrously impractical i mean it really and you it sort of we're getting to that stage now where some of the guys you know when you talk to the old 70s keyboard players and we're all going oh yeah you're still using the the moog and then he goes no i'm all in the box mate you know it's, it's too much hassle <laughs> and, that stuff. and i'm wondering now whether some of these modular performers because they have to take these rigs with them and, uh, 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 you know, how much of that they can, you know, and uh, Davina is now starting to use a lot more digital and samplers and things just to, for things to be repeatable and to be able to play more than one tune, you know, so that there's actually things yeah. that can, can change up. So how much modular do you need to have to be a modular performer in the next sort of 12 months? There might actually be, you know, think people coming up with much smaller units, but it's an interesting, interesting development. That, yeah. that polyend um, preset... <laughs> It's really interesting. Did you see that the Polyend uh, preset? I I did just with that with that in mind though, just because it's as as a module, it's got a uh, you can just store loads of different settings. <laughs> so you, you know, recallable. It's like a like a junk junction box. Oh, it does tons of stuff. But I mean, I, I thought it was I thought that was an interesting development uh, based on what you were saying. I think uh, I can imagine a lot of people, a lot of performers think that's going to be able to solve many a prob many a problem really um i'm just seeing if i've got the yeah, video sorry I, I cut into ben then that's all right i'm just seeing if i've got the video is that we did we did one with um it was the poly and new products because they had three they had three new modules um all three of which were all really interesting the first one was the uh was a follow-up to uh the previous one that they had um poly the poly 2 module uh and then yeah i got that there uh, that's a poly 2 yeah and then the next one is the preset one uh which is probably mid, by middle of the video uh, uh oh yeah there we go there it is yeah i'd say that's like a load of preset cvs i guess by the looks of things yeah yeah so uh, okay so it's a bit like the uh is it make noise do the, like the pads and things where you can but but more more yeah. stuff yeah yeah, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. 
just to cut back in over Gaz, sorry Gaz. Um, there's, a, <laughs> right. there's a few ways of doing that. Um, just to shout out a few kind of modules, ADAC have a VC transitions, which is five voltages that you scale and offset and kind of manage them. But it's all then controlled on a crossfader. So a, to me, that's a little bit like the crossfader on an octa track. At one side, the state of the machine is this, and at the other, everything morphs across because all these voltages are changing. There's the pressure points as well, and the new, I think Macau, the Future Sound Systems, and Daniel Miller's Mute collaboration. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the same thing. I think that's it. It switches, voltages, isn't it? I think. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's the mutes on switch, uh, stum, but then the Macau is voltages, where one ah, knob okay. turn. Again, we're kind of trans, kind macros, of morph out. Macros, these... that's right, yeah. Well, I've got that, yeah. but I didn't. I don't um, think I've edited it yet. But the preset looked great, because there was lots of slots on it to send these nine voltages out. So, you know, lengths of envelopes, filters, effects, kind of everything could change. You could sequence through it. Um, it seemed to do a really good job. Yeah, that could be. That, I think it's kind of interesting. I don't know, um, Dave. Did you find uh, you've not jumped in the modular world? Did this find? Did you find this kind of pushed you further away from the thought of it, or or made you think mm, that looks interesting? Uh, I'm I'm completely conflicted. I mean, obviously we've got the large format stuff, but um, yeah, there were occasions where I'd walk past a booth and think, well, that sounds interesting, but. There were a lot of occasions where I walked past the booth and thought, that sounds broken. And I don't know whether uh, it really was broken or not, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's very, but I, again, I think that's what I liked about the show is that there's a level of expertise that is across the board with attendees. So you can have a conversation with somebody yeah. and you know that you're not nerding them out. And actually, I was kind of more interested to discover some of the more esoteric modular stuff, uh, purely because, you know, there are no shops I can go into here and go, can you tell me about that? And can you tell me about that? It's obviously all internet video based. So it was nice. Lucky we're here, though, isn't it? it? Flesh. <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, it made me realize how valuable a service it is, actually. Yeah, well, you just don't get time for everything. I mean, it's almost impossible. I don't. What about you, Jim? Did you? I mean, because I know you're you're hardware based generally. I mean, you use both, but I mean, you're more kind of traditional units rather than uh, so, uh, modular. Did you see? Did you see anything you thought that made you think mm, maybe I should get a little case and put one of those in? I always think that, and then I come to my senses, and I don't. But I uh, there's there's a there's a little company. Uh, Eric Schloppy runs a company called Schloppy Engineering, and I. I've met him at a couple shows, and he makes some really. Uh, there, there. It's almost like how much noise can I possibly generate here, and then how can I totally screw up the noise that I've generated? And and those things, I don't know how practical they are, but they're an awful lot of fun. And um, he had a new module called the 100 Grit, and uh, it it was interesting for to me from a, because it had some performance aspects to it. He's got some little uh, like brass. Uh, conductors and things you can touch to to really tweak the sound and and uh, so I, I I look at that kind of stuff and I think you know this would be kind of fun to have my my I'm sorry I'm yeah. just find, I'm finding the video so yeah. I can, we can have a look at it there's a part where he runs some drums through it and and uh, if you go to the the if you go to the uh, silver face panel and um because I think he's got a there's a ah, there we go yeah that that down it? there sorry. With some of the feedback pads. So that's quite distorted and uh, glitchy, right? Yeah, but those little brass knobs at the top, they're conductors, and you can you can play it with your fingers and, and tweak the sound and that kind of. So you have a little, some performance aspects to it. Um, and I listen to that kind of thing, and I think if I had something small, you know, a few of those types of things, maybe to uh, to complement my, you know, what I already have, uh, that that's interesting. It, it, it's it is extremely overwhelming if you're not um, really. Uh, I mean, yeah. I understand what's going on with the modular stuff, but if you, you you walk down hall after hall after hall, and there's just so much of it, which, which is good to see, but it's also overwhelming because where where do you focus your attention? Yeah, that's true. I mean, I know Gaz, you did a bunch of stuff. You know, you covered a broad range of things, and it's it. The modular stuff is when you're not if you're not right in it. Sometimes it's hard to know what insightful question to ask that makes it different, right? Uh, hold on, sorry, I just muted you. Yeah. There we go. There you go. Carry on. Sorry, yeah. my mistake. <laughs> no, absolutely. Yeah, it's um, it, yeah, it's difficult to kind of know what is the latest thing because just getting up to speed with it all is um, 
it's really uh god it is it's, it's so much there um but i mean you know i think though th- there was so much stuff that isn't modular at super booth though that um yeah. you know the, you know the, like like software there's some gr- great software there and one of the things that blew me away was uh bitwig 3 and ah, the modular so uh, the grid which is the new big thing that sort of, uh, that's part of Bitwig 3. Um, and the reason why I mention this, though, is because this, is, um, this has got the best graphic interface I've seen, I think, because there's lots of software um, modular setups now. But uh, the one in Bitwig has got this incredible help. When you press, like, F1, whatever module you've got selected, it'll kind of zoom that module large. And there'll be um, lots of um, arrows tell- uh, and, and descriptions um, telling you what every function does. But the amazing thing is, Carry the on, controls all again. still. Yeah, yeah. The the controls all still work. Oh yeah, this is it. There we go. So like it's like the manual, but it's all still running. So you can kind of adjust the parameters in the context of the help. Uh, so for someone like my, myself, who's, um, you know, still quite intimidated by modular, this is, this is brilliant. Uh, and you can always see exactly what the signal's doing with animations. Um, I you, thought uh, it looks like I, you saw it demoed on that big touch screen as well, which is quite good yeah, for thought, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And it just makes me think Apple are being really silly, kind of dragging their heels on that. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks it, So yeah, I thought I'd mention that, though, just because, you know, it, it connects to modular, but also to software. And Because uh, you looked at that other one, didn't you, Nick? The um, I didn't get to look at it. The software modular setup. Um, oh, Cherry like, Audio. That's right. The Cherry Audio? Yeah. yeah, the Cherry Audio guy, um, which was, I can't remember what it's called now, but it's, yeah, it's an interesting environment because it has, um, I don't think I've got the video up yet. Um, I think it has, it's it's like, um, what's it called? V- VCV Rack. VCV Rack and, uh, and SoftTube Modular, but it's like an, an alternative mm-hmm. environment. It has a built-in store and then it comes with, it's like 99 bucks and it comes with 100 modules. It's all got VST hosts in it as well. So it's quite it's sort of similar to the... Uh, mm. uh, Oh, I can't even remember what it's called now. That's how my brain. <laughs> even though Jim's just told me VCV rack. VCV rack. Yeah, it's quite similar to that, you know. So, but it, it, it's a, more of a commercial product. But also, it comes with an environment that you can build your own. So there's it, that's quite meta and quite interesting as well. But mm-hmm. but yeah, there, you're right. There was a lot of software there. Though not as much, I think. Um, like for instance, um, oh, what were they called uh, the guy who's. Uh, you, you know, I, 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 my mind's gone completely. He's got, he, they, ben, he does he does uh, modular stuff. As he did, used to do modular hardware, but that focuses on software. Guy, for, uh, US guy, Chris Randall. What are they uh, audio damage. Uh, yes. audio, audio damage. Yeah, they. I mean, for instance, like they didn't go this year because they're focusing more on <laughs> software, so it didn't make sense for them. But I mean, there's still a place for it there for sure. Um, yeah. I, and- well, Ableton Live, you know, the, the, the CV tools. The CV tools, tools was really good, actually. I have to say, I thought I've got, a, mm. I think I've got that somewhere. I, I did actually uh, pick up the video. Yeah, this, this was Dylan from CV, uh, from <coughs> Ableton. And the fact that it, uh, you know, I mean, we've seen a lot of this stuff before, but because it's sort of integrated into Ableton as devices, even though these are Mac devices, mm. it looks like kind of pure Ableton stuff. But what's great about it is you can, you can, you can, uh, you just set up your uh, um, scaling, so you can get a, a, re- a like most modules struggle to get above four, five octaves, you know, and most sort of not very well engineered analog synths will struggle to get above four, or five. and you can get up to nine with this because it just compensates. You go, okay, let's calibrate, and it goes, yep, you just need a DC coupled interface. It spits out the voltage, brings in the pitch, it goes, yeah, you're out of tune. Okay, so I'm going to adjust. So you get your custom scale, and that means all you know, anything you've got can become a much broader and much more powerful synth. Though. Even for that alone, it's kind of, and that's going to be free with Ableton 10.1. So that's pretty cool. I know Ben, you use Ableton, don't you? I mean, have you checked that out? That looks kind of interesting. Interesting, that one, right? Yeah, I was trying to uh, Milo before the event about that one. Um, some of those features have been done elsewhere, not to diminish it being enabled. No, that's but, true, yeah. yeah. But the fact it's in 
live and looks like live devices, I think for me and my headspace makes a massive difference. From just kind of going over to the window, you know, drop a chorus on a pad sound or something. Oh, I want another LFO to send out to this filter or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It makes a huge difference not dipping in and out of other pieces. And to see it all integrated, I think it's kind of a long time coming, really. Um, mm. I know a few people are working on DC coupled interfaces because usually anything AC will filter out all your sub audio ins and outs. So I think it's one of those where we're all going to need a big interface because you're going to want to send four or five things out for a modest setup, maybe pitch, gate, velocity, LFOs or whatever it might be. But if you've only got a four channel, six channel sound card, that's gone. So you know, we, we're going to potentially need um, bigger sound cards. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens in that space. Well, it's, that's, but, that's interesting. Always, yeah, come on, sorry, carry on. I, I'll, I'll jump in and say. Yeah, I was going to say we're live. The per track delays for scaling everything as well. You should really easily be able to get a setup where CV's going out of the card, audio's coming back in, internal audio and external audio is all just kind of track delayed into place and it nudges and locks. It should. I've not tried it on a big setup, but it should be really easy to get a big system talking to each other now. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of. I mean, I don't know, uh, like Dave. I don't know whether you get the opportunity to. I mean, integrate your stuff. I mean, do you tend to either midify it or just play it in live and not worry about CV? Uh, all of the above, really depends. Depends. It's interesting this whole chat because actually, with the, so you can lose hours in whatever you're doing. But uh, when I was looking at a lot of the module guys, uh, you know, they were kind of pouring over the most minuscule sound difference while they were tweaking away, and they'd lose hours that way. One of the things that uh, I like with an instrument is that you lose hours when you play it, that you get that kind of feedback from it. And that was, for me, when they came, you know, when, they, uh, when Novation came and said, oh, would you do some sounds for Peak? Peak's fantastic but it's a box that makes a sound. Whereas when they asked me to do stuff with Summit, it was like, A, this needs to be much more detailed because you have to get that kind of the right feedback from the keyboard and whatnot when you're playing it. So yeah, a slightly oblique turn, but um, yeah, I like the way that the sound designers guys are going on the Euro rack stuff and the modular stuff really infinitesimal kind of degrees and they'll lose hours in that whereas a musician for me what i find really fascinating is when somebody walks up to an instrument and sits and plays it uh but yes all of the above to your answer really anything whatever <laughs> suits and half the time i'm working with other people you see so it depends yeah. what they want to do well I, I we did a i did a piece with uh rme i'm, I'm starting to realize that we've actually still got a load of videos to go up uh, i did a piece with rme because rme have now got like a maddie expander for their uf uh, whatever it is the uf uh, x plus so it's a maddie interface a 32i interface that's uh uh, or 32 out that's DC coupled but he was saying because I was saying oh DC coupled inputs he was saying no the problem is because their their Maddie stuff is like 24 bit 192k and when you're running really high quality audio interfaces to get DC coupled on the input is really difficult apparently because you've got to protect the mic amps you've got it you don't want that stuff going into those beautiful high quality A to D's so maybe what somebody needs to do is build a kind of dual foot purpose audio interface. So you've got four in, four out, plus, you know, eight or ten extra outs, which are the lower grade ones that you just use for CV um, pl pl plug in and out. And it's like expert sleeper stuff. So, you know, they're, 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 those things are really, and they're quite affordable. So you could imagine a, that part of a broad, you know, like an Apollo, because Apollo's DC coupled, but you wouldn't really want to use up those beautiful, uh, um, uh, what are they called so, um, the, the 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 mic the mic camps that do that kind of special stuff? You wouldn't want to put control voltages into that. It'd be a waste of time and also a bit scary in case you blew it up. So you can imagine an audio <laughs> interface which has multiple, you know, two two distinct purposes. That would make sense because it it beats having to aggregate it. That's for sure, doesn't it? I mean, you know, aggregation just doesn't really work so good. I think. I know, and you, you've probably tried that, and it, it, it's a real faff, isn't it, aggregating audio interfaces? You get the number mm, yeah. goes, and all, it's just not, it's not yeah. really, it's not really all that good, so maybe yeah. that's what we need. Yeah, oh, good idea. Oh, I just realised I haven't done any adverts at all, which is probably <laughs> really, uh, that, that's another miss. I'm going to do one now, I do beg your pardon, uh, um, uh, uh, advertisers, so uh, we'll do this one first. Yeah. 
Yep, this is the soft tube uh, parallels, which I have done a video on. It's really interesting. It sounded great, actually, and it's made from it's dual source synth. It's made from waveforms from a lot of classic synths, uh, and it looks lovely in the flesh, but it sounds really good. It's got some great effects, and the detail in the oscillators and the details in the filter modeling are taking a lot of the nous from their soft tube modular stuff. Uh, there's 100 high quality pre recorded multi waveforms. Lots of sonic progression within each one means near infinite source material, 14 voices, 7 per source. Uh, hundreds of expertly created presets from uh, big sound designers uh, BT, Richard Devine, Enhalt, and more. Three uh, very detailed analog module filter types, state variable, backtrol, upper G, and resident peaks. And five sophisticated types of modulation source LFO random. Euclidean sequencer, step sequencer, envelope, five quality effect. I mean, there's there's a ton of stuff in there. Well worth checking out if you go over to SoftTube and have a look at that. That's something I can thoroughly recommend, and I thank them for their uh, support of the show. Oh, uh, yeah, that's embarrassing. That's the that's the thing. There's so much to talk about here. I mean, there really is um, a ton of stuff. Um, ben, so uh, did I ask you what your, what your product of the show was? I mean, you could have more than one, but was there something that really stood out for you? Yeah, uh, just... Really briefly before that, um, sort of sidetrack, just going back to speaking about making things simpler in modular, I think this one really went under everyone's radar. I know the guys at Instruo didn't push this particular one. They had two really big modules that I'd like to mention, but their new VCA is little 4HP, tiny VCA, uh, two channels. The top one will ring mod. You can invert the signals. Uh, so you can ring mod on the top one and just normal amplitude VCA control on the bottom. But around the back, they have little expanders to plug them into each other so you can sum all the VCAs together. And just this idea of having volume control in a CVable VCA control, maybe one in each row or two in a row, and have them all chain across, you know, building a CV control mixer without the cabling, I think is really attractive. Um, and I, I certainly didn't cover it. Um, Jason at Instro told me there were other things they wanted to present, but... I think that's a really big thing. And right, the okay. Rion digital patching as well. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to I, check it I, out. I've got that. Actually, I did a video of that. Um, and that's an interesting... That They're using an internal busing again. So that it's, it's a separate bus. So it's a flyer cable that runs between their modules. And all it doesn't... it do, All it does is the actual... You basically I have eight sort of eight groups and everything with the same number is patched to itself. I mean, it's really, really simple. You don't get any uh, attenuation or any of that stuff. But that's the sort of thing that they could build into uh, the dope for bus, I think, quite easily. And that's the sort of stuff we've talked about this before. And I think there's definitely room for that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, I, th yeah, I think you're right there, Ben. The CV gate buses on uh, most bus boards, I know companies like Maleco and 4MS, they're passing through MIDI clock or analog clock and reset so you hit start on one sequence and your whole roll kind of fires up that can have some issues when you have another module that wants to use those two pins on the board for maybe pitch and gate information oh, so it's yeah, a little I'll bit bet. tricky <laughs> because there's, there's only two gates available above the actual power ones uh, two pins sorry um but i think the two modules that definitely got mentioned to me the most were the two instrua the lubar and arbor uh, Luba is the uh, oh, tip. Don't, style don't they look beautiful? I mean, they are mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely, goes, absolutely gorgeous. Those they. I, I it goes back to what you were saying. Uh, Gaz was saying about Bitwig as well about having help. They've got these blank panels made up that's effectively got the manual. Yeah, great idea. Oh, cool. Great idea. <laughs> really, really good idea. I think Ben's just having a glitchy moment there. So sorry about that. Don't know whether we got to his bet. When he comes back, we'll uh, <laughs> we'll ask him what his hit of the show was. God, so uh, I'll come back to you, Jim, because I haven't I, we haven't heard from you for a little while. So what what was a product of the show for you? Oh, it's it's really hard to, yeah. to pick one product, but I want to kind of go with something Dave was talking about because as a as a as a keyboard player, um, there's you when you have a connection with an instrument and, and it makes you, it kind of you, you can relate to it and connect with it. I had kind of a surprise. I was uh, I had seen the um, C15. That's by uh, nonlinear uh, non labs. Nonlinear labs. I, I I saw it at Nam and I just kind of walked right by it because well yeah look at it and and it, it it's it's a somewhat maybe uninspiring interface you know looking at it. 
carry yeah, on. Then carry I, on. Well, I started to say, I just sat down and started playing the thing, and it's got, it's extremely expressive, and you feel, uh, uh, it, it feels like an instrument. It doesn't feel like I'm pressing keys. It feels like I'm playing an instrument, it, almost like you'd play a, a piano or some kind of acoustic instrument. Um, the, Which is what they're going for, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and, and I know it's it's gotten some uh, flack, I guess, because it doesn't have MIDI, and you know, I I don't know all the technicalities, but in in understanding kind of their thought behind that is, well, MIDI is such a low resolution compared to what we are going for, and I think it really comes across when you hit those keys, and and there's much more ability to uh, sort of hit those. It, it behaves much more like maybe an acoustic instrument would rather than a digital instrument that's got to send values that are going to, you know, MIDI compliant values or whatever. Um, and it's got the two ribbon controllers that run the length of the uh, instrument. It's made of wood. The keys just feel great. And, you know, it's expensive. Yeah, you're telling me it's like five grand or something. And it really is cheap. expensive. And I don't, you know, I'm not sure exactly who the market is, but when I sat down and to, to play it, I just didn't, I really didn't want to stop playing it. And I was really surprised. You know, they have banks of, I was just going through presets mostly and making a few tweaks. But it just puts you in a mood. Yeah, it's really, I, I, I would agree with that. I haven't played it, but that's what they were going for. Uh, Stefan Schmidt, isn't it? It's the guy, one of the founders of Native Instruments. He sort of like moved off away from software, although inside it is essentially <coughs> a kind of custom reactor core with something like, it's like two oscillators and it's all the interaction and he's got some really clever stuff going on that nobody really knows what it is apart from him, but it, it, it makes the most most incredible sounds. And it, you're right, the expressivity and people really bitch about the fact that it's got no MIDI. But it's pointless because the it's it's like two or three thousand step resolution per parameter per you know it, it just doesn't it, it wouldn't translate to anything that MIDI can offer, so uh, yeah it'd be a bit pointless. But the, yeah okay that's a good call. So Jim has actually come up with a product of the show. Ben, you were still talking about Instro. Was that your was that your choice or were you just getting round to the uh, the product of the show in your you know in your opinion or uh, products? <laughs> yeah, I was. Uh talking myself awake with this uh, booth flu. Um, no, I think the two intro modules really stood out. Um, I've known and worked with Jason for quite some time now. Um, I've had things in the past with Jason at Instro where I kind of give him a bit of feedback or this doesn't quite look right on a scope or something sounds off and he's doing a lot by ear and making so things feel and sound right and perform like instruments. And I think that goes a long way because module is kind of everything to everyone. It could be an effects box. It could be a utility signal distribution box. It could be a synth, a drum machine. And it can be a toolbox or an instrument, I think. Um, and it's beautiful when it's an instrument. It can be a great problem solver when it's not. But I like when people really do push these things as instruments for expression. Um, the, one of the real standout products, and I think the best, or one of the best demos we had, was the Soma Pulsar 23. Yay, um, oh, yeah. of course. We, we, I know that we mentioned this at the start of the show. It's been talked about a few weeks ago, but we kind of just wanted to throw the camera down and applaud. <laughs> Vlad gave us like a great little personal concert. Yeah. Um, I could barely yeah. hear him. He said, I'm losing my voice. Can I take the mic? And just he kind of stood and, well, sat playing the thing. And I thought, God, what's going on? This might be a bad demo because I can't interact and ask questions. But once he just started playing, really amazing instrument. Everything from basic analog drums to all this weird, yeah, Lombard, kind of banana noise box type stuff. Really lovely piece of kit. I think yeah, for me that was my my star of the show, and the reason uh, the uh, the reason it was is because as we, you know, I was a big fan of the Lyra Eight, but it's as an instrument, it's an instrument that's self-contained. You know, it says stuff like you know a gate input or what, but you just forget it. There's, it's just just the, any interfacing you have with it is totally irrelevant. It won't do anything on any sort of scaling or time frame that is of any use to anybody. Whereas this is got the complete bonkers of of Soma stuff with. Uh, MIDI input and clock input. So you can, he, he says, you know, I want, you know, yes, you can use this for pop production. It's only a four voice synth. It weighs five kilograms, this thing, and it's 1500 bucks. And nobody seemed to care. You know, it's just like, yeah, okay, it's ridiculously expensive. It's sort of ludicrous, but the sound and the context behind it, I and mean, it's just, yeah, it's it sounds brilliant and it, and it's totally mad. So that would be my choice as well, Ben. I would tend to agree with you there. Yeah. Um, well, it's, 
it's you know 110 patch points 53 knobs not that that's ever a measure of quality or, or what people are going to express themselves the most on because the flexibility of it it really did seem to you want some kind of hip-hop-ish live loop stuff you want to just midi up some kind of techno having all the effects on board like the soma uh, uh, the lyra 8 sorry it, the whole thing becomes the instrument it isn't synth with some effects on our drums with some delay after it felt Absolutely. like one unified box um, that was nice to see and the fact that you can touch the patch points and use your body to kind of make the connection. You don't, if you run out of cables, you just got to go grab them and that'll work as well. I mean, it's just mental. Brilliant stuff. Brilliant stuff. Um, okay, guys, I'm coming over to you now. I mean, I know that's going to be tough, uh, but so something something that really kind of, I mean, it may be, you know, maybe you agree or maybe, it, or maybe it's something new. Well, I think the Pittsburgh Modular Voltage Research Laboratory. Oh, yeah, that sounded sounds great unbelievably good i mean that just really just 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 i don't know it blew my socks clean off that that was something else uh i just thought the I, it, it it was just so the gut punch off it was amazing they had and like he's, a, fi he's figured out a way to fold square and sawtooth waves so they still remain square and sawtoothy the, but they, the the, the Bottom end, yeah. yeah, the girth, as we like to say. <laughs> oh, I thought it was amazing. I really, oh god, it's so hard to say. Because uh, I mean, <clears throat> I'm going to say something controversial here, but I love the the guitar keys from Electron. I just love it. I thought that I love the format of it, and that's getting such a lot of uh, ridicule at the moment. And it's, I thought it was. Um, I think, I think you have to sit and play with that to and it kind of all makes sense you know because yeah it's, i would it agree quite cute. Uh, yeah it, well, it makes sense as a thing doesn't it when you it play does. It. but when I you mean, look like, at it you just think what the hell have you done yeah because like the, the pitch and mod wheels are on the other side of the but it's like it's like you've got the entirety of a of a digiton and and then there's a keyboard sticking out one side and the pitch and mod wheels are on the other side but do you know, it all feels ergonomic and really great. Um, and that sort of shallow depth, I think, makes great sense for lots of studios. Sounded setups. good, though, didn't it? Didn't it sound good? It oh, sound, sounded so good. And just very inspiring. And just having those um, real-time controls at the top there. And, ah, I loved it. I really loved that. I, was, um, I didn't know what to expect. When I saw it, because we went to the uh, Electron Studios launch on the Wednesday. That was the yeah. day before Superbooth began. And that's a beautiful space they've got there. Um, and one of the things that's really good about this Electron Studio space, I mean, I, I think anyone who's going to Berlin should check out what's going to be going on there because it's going to be all sorts of like workshops and performances that happen there. But uh, it, 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 it's like a showroom, but, the, but it's... Uh, uh, but, but they don't sell they're not anything. Selling, they don't sell anything. No. <laughs> they're just selling the dream, aren't they, guys? They're selling the dream. Yeah. <laughs> but the cool thing as well is, is, is there's other, other brands stuff dotted around amongst the Electron stuff as well. It's sort of... Um, I thought it's a really cool idea. Uh, that Yeah, so... I, I, anyone going to Berlin, make sure you head there for so sure. So you, are you nominating um, the, the Digitone key, keys then? Oh, gosh. Well, it's either that or, or the... Pittsburgh modular, but I love the Knicks too as well from oh, Dreadbox. Yeah, we forget that, that. totally yeah. did it for me as well. That is so awesome. Uh, God, and there's a whole host of other things. Ah, ah, I can't decide. <laughs> it's difficult, isn't it? Uh, there's something I'm looking is. for actually here because I know that Jim, you were quite excited by this, but I'm just looking for the actual the video now. Where was it? Was it? Ah, mm. uh, this. By all, this. yeah. Sorry. This is the just the mini log XD in desktop. That is, I, I know mm. Jim, you were you were kind of keen on that because you were I thinking was. I don't want another set of mini keys, but I like the sound of it because I, I reviewed this just beforehand and I thought it sounded good. I've 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 liked the XD ever since I got to play it. I think it Nam might have been the first time, but <clears throat> but yeah, I don't need another. I, I have enough keys. I don't want another mini log keyboard. I don't particularly like the mini log key bed. I have a mini log. I like the sound, but I don't really like playing it that much. Um, but you know, I can put this thing and uh, it takes up a little bit of room and I get the sounds, I get the digital oscillator. I like, I, I like what they, what Korg has done with it. And I like that they, 
It sounds like they listened. I think there were a lot of people saying, okay, I don't really need another keyboard, especially that keyboard, but I like this synthesizer. And so I think that was a smart idea. And it's got Polychain as well. Yeah, uh, that's, that's exciting, thing. actually. Polychain, so you could put, hook up. So, Dave, I, I was thinking of you when I saw this because uh, I thought you could actually put a rack of them up together. So you, you could have like an, uh, 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 an XD12, so a 12 voice on three layers with the little keyboard. So it's kind of a really poor man's version of the uh, eight voice that you've got. <laughs> <laughs> but with effects and, and yeah, the pitch yeah. being in tune. <laughs> no, yeah. no Tolex though. That's funny. So, um, well, did I ask you? Did I ask you for a product of the show? I can't remember if I did or whether there was something that. that isn't it? I mean, it's definitely for me. That, yeah, that, of course, that, the summit. That experience for me. So they flew us out with. Uh, um, I was sat next to Chris Huggett on the plane there and on the plane back. So I bored him to death. We were staying at the same hotel, so I bored him to death even more. Uh, and yeah, it was just nice, you know, having known how much work that everybody's put into it to see it be so well received. Uh, and yeah, other than that, yeah, people, people, I have to say actually quite a big, a really big thanks. It must on a very minuscule level compared to yourself. It's quite bizarre to be walking through a show all these years later and people could stopping me every kind of 10 yards going, Hey, from the Sonic talk podcast. Ah. Hey, you know, <laughs> and they didn't want to punch me, which oh, is kind yeah. of strong. Yeah. When you say, so, yeah, that was, <laughs> yeah, nice. Um, yeah, the gang, the gang we were hanging out with, you know, Alex, CR78, um, Chris and Bridget. I mean, so, yeah, just so many, so many. So, yeah, it was. It was, it was uh, jolly good fun. It was a moment for me. And for the first time, you know, they put my patches on the A patch. So, technically, I was kind of an A lister and sat You got the A side. <laughs> I, fe I, I felt like it, yeah. Ah, oh, brilliant. That was good fun. <laughs> Good fun. There, there's so much there. I wanted to actually, well, I'm going to do another plug because we, we should also, uh, well, actually, let's do the competition because uh, it's it, it, we've obviously got uh, our friends at Isotope as well. So do that and then we'll come back. I know we have, we're nearly getting to the end, but uh, that's just the way it goes. So, uh, yes, this is the Isotope uh, guy. So I'll let you play this. Standard and leader in audio repair for music and post-production. And with RX-7, we've introduced groundbreaking new ways to quickly and easily fix and manipulate audio. Take the game-changing Repair Assistant, an intelligent helper that can detect noise, clipping, clicks, hum, and more. Also new in RX-7 is Music Rebalance, a powerful source separation tool. Drums too loud, vocals not loud enough, let's fix that. You can also create instrumental versions of songs by removing the vocal elements. You can now alter the pitch without affecting the timing of your audio and conversely, alter the time without affecting the pitch with the new variable time and variable pitch modules. Using the new dialog contour, you can improve the performance of a line or even create a new performance by altering the pitch contour of the dialog, therefore adjusting the intonation of the speaker and introducing Dialog Dereverb, a module powered by machine learning to reduce the presence of reverberations around dialogue. RX-7, a new frontier in audio repair. And of course, uh, you can download that. Go to isotope.com and search out RX-7. You can get a 10-day copy of that. And it's the sort of tool that if you work in any form, digital audio or video as well, I mean, there's something in there that you're going to find really, really useful and will save oh, your bacon. Uh, I, before we get Yeah, so uh, the competition, <laughs> we got a winner from last week, uh, but we'll do the competition now. Uh, we're looking for the... Uh, the oh, that, that word doesn't look so good when you write it down. Sonic Assistance uh, and uh, RX-7. So the hashtag... Hashtag Sonic Assistance, one word, and there's hashtag RX7 to at Sonic State and at Isotope Inc. If you, if you put that in a tweet, then you will be entered into the competition, and that means that you get the chance to win uh, a copy of RX7 next week. So do check that out at the hashtag Sonic Assistance and the hashtag RX7 to at Sonic State and at Isotope Inc. And, of course, uh, we have a winner from last week, and the winner is a chap called Jim Child, uh, whose Twitter handle is at Shepherd Jim. And uh, they tweeted the last competition because we didn't have a show last week, so week before. So if you get in touch, Jim Child, Shepherd Jim, are you going to get a copy of 
Drive RX7. And while I've got your attention, uh, we're putting on a show 26th of May in Bath. We've got uh, Apparat, which I've spelt wrong. I'm just going to put another P in there because that would mean. <laughs> you know. And Apparat and Dataline, which is, of course, Chenk, uh, both playing in Bath at Comedia as part of the Bath Festival. I'm. Uh, mi- uh, collaborated with Will Gregory from Golf Rap on that to put uh, together this little bill. So if you want to check the tickets, uh, I've got a special URL there, which is bit.ly slash apparat 2 ps dash bath. If you go there, it'll take you to where you can buy tickets for that. That's on Sunday, the 26th of May in Car- Comedia in Bath. I said I'd plug it. I know it's a very niche because most of our listeners are nowhere near Bath or nowhere near England or the UK. But there, I put it in anyway. Um, so uh, I'm just trying to think if there's any other stuff we could cook because I mean this has been very free. Loads. Yeah, gas. <laughs> you've, yeah, I know you've got a load of stuff. Though, so let's 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 just have a quick. If, if people have got time for a little bit more. Uh, right. Oh gosh. Um, ah, uh, right. New stuff. Um, oh god, I'm on the spot now. Well, um, you know. <laughs> I said it's like, God. It, I mean, it was just so much. Uh, the. Um, B- Bifaco uh, had fantastic uh, MIDI module I thought was really good. Um, just for, you know, devices for sort of bringing the worlds together. I mean, you know, I I don't do modular, but I do like desktop units so very much. So MIDI, I'm a MIDI, I'm a MIDI guy, you know, so I'm always looking for, I'm looking for MIDI related products. So it's really cool to see something that is, um, fully embracing of uh, of of midi and uh and um you know the the, the euro rack uh this thing has got tons and tons of interest in potential i uh, also um v- vermona's mellow dicer i thought looked really cool it's uh, a little uh sequencer again in, in a module uh it's just a prototype at the moment but uh, we did a little video on that um we we prefaced that little um, Vermona feature with a tiny little history, with a little history, which is quite nice. And oh, Thomas he's really yeah, interesting because particularly being yeah. in, in the former GDR because they were you know they were the other yeah. side of the Iron Curtain. Were they? Is this the thing? You're His talking father. About? W- oh yeah, the Mellow yeah, yeah, Dicer yeah. 2009 uh, Super Superbooth prototype. That's particularly yeah. yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that's got some. That's, Really interesting. Got some really cool features. Um, oh. <laughs> um, God, Did you see so the Phoenix? Um, the no. Sorry, I was going to say the the Phoenix Four, officially Phoenix Four Dutch synth. Oh, what the the one with the multiple touch and that that kind of thing. Did they do that or was it? They did two. So the original is it Sonovaton? I, I think I might, no, might have uh, sin, it. No, sin. Sinton, uh, yeah, Sintonova. Oh, yeah, no, you're right. Sintonova. I, yeah, Sintonova. yeah, completely yeah. butchered the name. <laughs> They're working with this is not rocket science, who have some great Yara rap modules, and then they're helping bring the digital side to the new uh, pan synth as well. That was the booth with all the helmets ah. with like arms ah, hanging off. Ah, okay. So, uh, yeah. I didn't know that. I I interviewed him a couple of years ago. The nice, tall Dutch chap. Uh, I've forgotten his name now, but he came over and said hello. He was, uh, yeah, that that amazing synth, because they were Sinton, weren't they? So originally. So the the Sintonovos, new synth, new Sinton, yeah. So there you go. There's a tip for you. Are you you managing to dredge anything more out there, Gaz, or should we uh, move on? I'm just trying to look through the videos that I made. Um, God, there was so much. Um... (laughs) I, I quite like that Ploitech spe- speech synthesizer. I thought it was really fun. It was, I mean, you know, it's a fairly niche thing, but um, I think it's the, the chip that was in the um, speak and spell. Ah, okay. You could sort of, you could type in, you, could, um, you plug in a, a QWERTY keyboard, type in, and then play, play it from a keyboard um, speech synthesizer. I thought that was really fun. Uh, you know, again, very niche. <laughs> oh gosh, uh, can can can, I, can you come back to me while I just yeah, do a I little can. more research? <laughs> I, I don't know whether or not there's any uh, uh, um, any other anything else to add because I mean, Dave, you you were you know the other I suppose other highlights. I mean, did you actually get to play anything other than the summit? Did you play anything? Did you manage to kind of get a moment with some headphones on anywhere? Not really. I wanted to go on the on the C15 thing. I really wanted to try that, but I think people kept keep keeping me away from it just in case I was like, I have to have this. And everybody I spoke to about that, because I was going, where is it, where is it? 
and everybody I spoke to just went, yeah, but it's got no MIDI. And I was just like, I don't care, I don't care, I just want to try it. Because I'd heard the stuff at uh, Mesa a few years ago, a couple of years ago, and thought, like Jim, you know, it sounds like you could come to develop a relationship with this <coughs> instrument. Uh, but any, no, not really. Did you see this? That did you see the Ballora, Ballora and the River? Did you see that? Uh, where was that? that was I saw the just... book stuff, and obviously Mark wasn't there. That was a bit of a disappointment. Yeah, it was a bit disappointing, but I think they had some local help and they probably just met. This was uh, this, this has been around for a while. This is a French eight-voice polysynth with a with the voice structure based on the Moog source. So it's got uh, I guess it's eight voices. It's eight part multi timbral. It's got full lot. Of, it's, you could set it up in those ways. It's got an analog tri chorus in it as well. Uh, it wasn't particularly well presented in terms of you know unique sounds it was a bit cheesy for my taste but i mean you know it was just the way that that, that some of the patches are in there but it, it and it weighs 25 kilograms and it's five grand so it's it's a it's a it's the sort of piece that dave i'd imagine you'd be gravitating towards and i'm surprised you didn't see it it was right it was right <laughs> next to the c15 that's why it was next to the it. c15 yeah you <laughs> kept away. Why, they just kept you away it from that room that. completely where was that near? Did I, you know, did I go anywhere near that? Because I'm still convinced with... there are places I didn't go. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> yeah, that that was the room with the uh, um, Schmitz and uh, yeah, the, a lot That's of expensive why, yeah. stuff in there. I was That's kept why. away from that room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I know, Vic. Okay, you got something. The game changer. The game changer. The 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 motor synth. Um, yes, I'm looking for that. That, was now. that yeah. thing. I mean. Did have That's a very distinctive sound. I got it. Uh, it it's bonkers, and they've built that. They've got that plasma distortion, mm. which is also insane. Right. Yeah. Let me see if I can find this. So they've got these spinning eight spinning yeah. motors. Let me let me put this yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, infrared light nickel <laughs> synthesizer. Yeah. Uh, with uh, like uh, depending on how much color, I love it. And then also I can <laughs> I can do a polyphonic mode. So now I have a chord. Wow, so that's that... the basic idea. So let me let me quickly uh, show you the the idea. Two voices per key. Each voice has a selection, like a selectable wave shape, amount of mix, scale, separate envelope, separate portamento, separate tone control. And uh, here's one note. Like each time I do that, the motor starts spinning twice as fast. It's, it's a bonkers idea. So it's basically an optical envelope. It's an op optical oscillator, which is each of those is, they're like a drone motor. So they're mm. very accurate. They're, they're bushless digital motors. So there's no wear and tear. You know, there's just nothing that's going to wear out on them. So they've got thousands of hours, hundreds of thousands of hours. And then on the bottom, they've got an infrared sensor, which put, and then three wave shapes. So it's it, the <laughs> infrared beam bounces off whatever the uh, the wheel is doing and the height, the speed that the wheel goes um, d d um, gives you the pitch and it's totally mad so there's a bit of like time but they're very fast because drone motors have to adjust incredibly quickly so the digital motors are uh, re and it he did a demo for me and it, it got from sort of quite you know beautiful stuff to absolute hellish mm. noise full-on <laughs> yeah. craziness and uh, they came up to me afterwards and said what so what do you think do you think that uh, pe the people that, that we could you know this is going to be okay and i said well look there's nothing like it i mean absolutely nothing like it mm. and you were saying yeah well also there's there is a lot of interesting ideas in the uh in the controls as well um so i think it's it's definitely worth a look at i think it's going on indiegogo isn't it so is it um, i don't know keep it, it's going to be expensive it's mm, going to yeah. be like a couple of grand isn't it but no no i don't think it's going to be that much what about 1200 maybe was it oh, okay uh, i might be wrong on that oh yeah maybe maybe 1400 somewhere around that that so yeah so it's not cheap for sure but um uh i i think uh the 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 Vulcan new base is worth yeah, mentioning. Well, that's all right. Not, it, I mean, yes, it looks okay. I, I like. I mean, I think this idea of it, which has got the valve in it. I, I mean, the demo I heard mm -hmm. was just all three hundred three, and I, you know, it doesn't really float my boat so much. But I'm sure it could do other stuff. Okay. Yeah, um, and uh, also, do you know, I think that teenage engineering little sequencer is actually quite good. I think that's that's it's. Uh, I think it's around about 160 pounds. This is the one that when they announced all of the modular, uh, the new modular range that uh, at NAM this year, this was the one that they withdrew 
and then they've kind of rethought it and um and then they so this Is thing here that? they were that. showing it for the first time yeah yeah because it's um it's four channel with four arpeggiators uh i think it's just offers a lot for the money and for you know for this for the size and they look they feel a little bit more they feel a little bit better than they look <laughs> well they're made um, of uh, they're made of plate steel that you bend don't you that they've yeah. got they've got yeah up. so you bend it into shape and mm -hmm. stick them together we should i was expecting they might be here actually because we've been told we were going to be get some for review but we haven't got them yet mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, but, uh, I, think that, I think it's easy to overlook that one. I think it's actually really, really good. Did you see that, Ben? I was just going to say, I think that's going to do really well. I did jump on that in January and order it. Um, the previous version that was pulled and, you know, all the orders refunded. You know, it brings a little bit of the Surge TKB thing in, the kind of music easel, booper, touch plate, vibe, keyboard, sequencer. It's not expensive, whether it's your rack or other desktop things. I think that's going to do really well. Um, there's mm. two I'd just really like to throw in there that I think will be really great for the kind of audience and chat room. I'll be really brief. The ALM Pamela's Disco Tech, which is a box that <laughs> takes the pioneer um, Ethernet standard for timing, how you hook up all you know, your mixer and two CDJs or whatever platform Pioneer are on, um, and just clocked everything. And I was like, well, how stable is it? You know, you've got a 24 PPQ clock, a 16th note quarter reset, a few different outputs. Um, and Matthew at ALM reached over and kind of just spun uh, the platter back on the CDJ and the Yoro right, just shifted and kind of came back in time perfectly. I was really impressed with that. Um, That's it. That, I've got it here. Pamela's Disco Tech. Yeah, tiny little box, nothing too sexy on its own, <laughs> but keeping everything in sync. You know, I've not seen anyone else do that. Um, and the other one was the wrong electronic sound stage, which takes inputs uh, depending on where they are in the panel and kind of auto pans them. But then it's it's working in a 3D uh, space and there's high and low pass filtering. There's 21 analog filters and six VCAs, I think. And depending on where you plug everything in, there's kind of an auto filter, auto pan thing going on. So they had two bass lines going. He said, let's put this one kind of near the bottom. That's the bass. Let's put this one higher up, you know, swap them around. The panning's all dealt with. And you could see the uh, voltage control, the depth of that filter in. So you could kind of push your 3D sound stage and pull it back in. Um, and when you hear, hear it in stereo, I was really impressed just as a kind of really basic, oh, this is a high app. It should be high end. It goes up there. This is a bass drum. It should go near the bottom in the middle. Just thinking of that 3D space and depth. Um, and I really like that. That's really impressive. Oh, that sounds good. I, I mean, yeah, Pamela's discotheque. Is that ba is that based on the Pamela's workout? That because there's a there's a module called yeah. that. But I don't, is that the same people? Uh, yeah, yeah. Pamela's workout is their little kind of clock LFO syncable, you know, master clock Bioro rap module. Pamela's new discotheque is the you know pioneer Ethernet format in one side and jacks on the other. And they really need they really need to talk to Pamela Anderson for some sort of endorsement. I think <laughs> just get a kind the of PCB <laughs> has her, the yeah. PCB has her in kind of um, you know. Mm. I, I won't go into it. There is <laughs> Pammy mode. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Tori Squid. That's worth a mention because uh, uh, you know they've now consolidated the brand names. Now Tori is the company name now or, you know is the brand name now they you know it was pioneer i think the previous ones have been pioneer dj torres and then al als1 or whatever they are but now the torres is um is is you know so the, the squid is the first thing that's under the torres you know as as a brand name uh but that sequencer i mean it's reasonably priced and is um is definitely uh uh, it's a very powerful sequencer. It's just just a MIDI sequencer, uh, but it can you know it's a sixteen channel MIDI sequencer. It's got lots of tricks up its sleeve, uh, and it's going to be interesting to see how well received it is. Because um, I know those other products they've put out uh, haven't really had the the continual support, so they're going to have to definitely convince the public that they're going to be um, dedicated. And I think maybe by uh by having this clear definition in the you know pioneer dj torres being you know uh, sorry th that's for the dj stuff uh and torres is for producer right. you know, okay uh, yeah. for the music producer yeah uh so i don't know i mean 
it, but it's good, worth a look at, worth a look at if you're if you're in the, in the market for a sequencer. Um, yeah, definitely. I was quite impressed. Uh, a couple of things to come. Uh, I did an interview with Richard Devine, which I th might be quite interesting. I had to chat with him about his live setup and that whole notion of trying to kind of cut down and simplify, maybe using some digital stuff to do that. Also got to meet the makers with Dave Rossum, which I was very pleased about. What a lovely guy. And what a guy who's kind of basically invented most things that we now use in our digital lives or had some say in it. It's, <laughs> it's astonishing. I mean, he's kind of like... Wow. Yeah, the stuff that he's done and is continues to do is kind of mind blowing. Really good uh, to have a chat with him. And um, what else is there? There's there's more stuff to go. I mean, there will be. We'll have a ton more videos to go up. So uh, um, it'll all yeah. be there. Uh, any other Not any other final interviews. any other final words? Anybody? I mean, I, well, I should ask you, Dave. You went last this year. You thinking you might go next year? Yeah, yeah. In fact, yeah. I had the conversation with Chris about it when we left. It was like. Or maybe we should go, maybe we should get a booth. Because it's, when talking to the Novation guys, it's, you know, they said it's a really good team building exercise as well. And everyone has, you know, works hard and has a bit of fun. And it's just not, I don't know. I got the feeling that it's possibly on the cusp of becoming, you know, a major, I major I, event it, and falling yeah. into that now. Nonsense, I don't think exactly they'll let it. he won't. I don't think Andreas will let it. I mean, the only thing that I say let mm. it down this year a little bit was the musical programming was a little bit mono focused. Uh, I, 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 I'd love to see like the Battery Opera Orchestra play there. I'd like to see some more melodic Yay. stuff. A lot Astro of it was, Deluxe. Uh, uh, yeah, I and mean, we saw Matt Hodson play there, <laughs> and I've got a piece with him as well. Yeah, I mean, I think they just need a bit more musical diversity and stuff because it's it's quite. It was quite, you know, some of it was just the same uh, and the same and the same again. I don't know how anybody else felt about that. And I'd, li I'd like to lobby for a bit, but I guess it's budget because the more people you bring over, I mean, a guy or a gal with a modular system is a lot easier to move and get to play than a band, you know, because it's less people and the, the, the cost, I imagine, comes into it. But I would like to see a bit more musical diversity. I don't know if anybody else feels that way. I do. One thing... Um one thing yeah. just to shout out is that the Schneiders, Laden, uh, they filmed all of the talks. So for us, you, yourself included, Nick, and most people here, you don't get any chance to see a talk or presentation or demo kind of in the theatre spaces. They're all filmed and are now going up on the Schneiders, Laden channel. Um, there's been some great ah, content. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, so it's well worth going over and subscribing and following all that side that we all just totally miss. Yeah, that's a very good point. In fact, that they they generally go up uh, over over longer periods of time. But uh, yeah, I think it's on Vimeo, isn't it? They don't post to YouTube. So. They've moved now, so they've now got a YouTube channel, not Vimeo, and there's already good a good handful of things. Yeah, big move. <laughs> wow. They've, um, oh, they, they've, well, that's, I take it all back, Dave. Next year, it's just going to be like now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've sold out. <laughs> things sure. are going up really quickly. You know, there's been five plus ten videos online already. Wow, that's such a lot. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing I, that was not like Nam really is Berlin because, you know, I'm from Southern California. So, walking, you know, Anaheim is, I grew up going to Disneyland and I'm, I know that area. And it was my first time being in Berlin. And it's just a great place for a show. Uh, it's so easy to get around. I know as the Sonic State team, we were able to take some time and, you know, see a little bit of Berlin and you can hop on a train, a tram. Mm -hmm. a, and you don't have those kinds of things around Nam. That just doesn't really exist. It's a whole different atmosphere, and I and you know Dave kept saying the people, the people, the people. It, it, the show is more than just a bunch of electronic things. It's it really had a feeling of, uh, you know, th about the people. You know, you, it yeah. was really inviting and warm and just a really nice place to be. Yeah, and the only other thing I'd like to say is they definitely need more variations of brands of Hefeweizen beer because it was a little bit lacking <laughs> in the uh, in the quality <laughs> department of beers uh, but I mean Schneider's and uh, um, Tim and uh, Adam and um, Herr Schneider's Andreas all of those people I mean they, they they've made a really good thing there and that's something that you can't deny mm. uh, for, for sure can can I just call out one thing? I, I was really really thrilled. Just I was I was I just come down with a flu on the last day. I had to miss the blooming after show on a Saturday. You all went off and had a great old time, and I had to go back shivering mess to the hotel. But I was just about to leave, and um, this chap came up to me and he said he had something. He he had he had a pre he had a present for me, and uh, I uh, and then and he took and and this is what it was. Look at oh, that. Look. How awesome. Ah. 
The Leaf is that audio. the Leaf Audio sound box? Microphonic yeah. sound box? Yeah, microphonic sound. Yeah, that's got to be the top swag, hasn't it? Look how amazing. Yeah, so it's got um, two uh, preamps. Uh, there's two contact mics inside here. And uh, oh, this, and uh, and thoughtfully, they also give provided me a it violin gave you a violin bow. Oh, wow. Jesus. <laughs> so I was absolutely so. Thank you very much, Leaf Audio. That's uh, that really, you know. <laughs> so I was I was sat shivering, waiting for the tram, feeling absolutely awful. But I had this with me, and it was um, it kind of made me feel. Make a sure, bit make sure you don't fall forward on that. They look like they were just about <laughs> eyeballs apart. Those big spikes. <laughs> you give yourself a lobotomy. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, no, it was good. It was good, and I'm looking forward to next year. And, uh, you know, I think more shows should have more music because I think that's a really, you know, we should. I mean, Nam, you know, and it shouldn't just be endorsee stuff. It should be interesting. And uh, what also happens is it breaks the th it breaks it up. I and mean, the fact that at Superbooth they've got announced, I say, we were lucky with the weather. It did rain a bit, and I know Matt got uh, moved inside, which meant a few people missed it. But uh, most of the time the weather was okay, and that was, you know, so... It, that's and but in uh, California, it's usually always okay, apart from when it really, really, really rains. Yeah, right, like Jim? a couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I take it all back. It's not all like that, but no, yeah, always. but yeah. Um, okay, well, it feels like we're kind of uh, we should probably. This has been a long show because there's a lot of stuff to get through. I mean, it's just that really is. But super move generally that we you could see all our stuff. It's still going up. Um, there's seventy plus videos up there now. There'll be a whole bunch more stuff tomorrow. I want to say thanks to our team, obviously Jim for helping out a lot. Uh, we've got uh, Ed and Rob and Andy, who's uh, t on a, uh, on holiday at the moment. And uh, Jim, Rob, uh, Andy. Uh, so that was us for me yes. and uh, yes. Gaz. Yeah, of course, of course. And can I forget? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Uh, yeah. So and, uh, everybody for kind of helping make it happen and all of that. And uh, you know, everybody mm. works very hard to bring you the stuff. Uh, but it's fun as well. It's not like a chore. Although I think Ed needs a little bit of. Uh, de-immersive therapy after so many <laughs> modules as i'm sure you do ben i'm sure you know while it's great sometimes you can have too much of a thing can't you yeah too much of a good thing exists but i, I was just gonna butt in and say and thanks to you for wrangling it all nick you know your support not just of your own team and the content the whole thing is massive and shouldn't be underestimated oh thanks uh, mate so thanks mm. to you as well nick's hey. one of those just for people hey. watching i can i can get on i can email or ring nick and go how do you do this? I've no idea. And, you know, to give people the time of day when you're so incredibly busy, um, unfortunately, doing what we do, we don't get to see people as much as we'd have liked. I would like to take a year off. But just bumping into everyone, it's totally, as Dave said, it's about the people. Um, and it's great. Well, uh, the trick is to have more people working uh, working with you so that you spend <laughs> slightly less time. I didn't even fill up two SD cards, but there's lots of stuff to do. You know, there's as you know, with it. It's just as just as much work when you're running things as when you're doing them. Right. But uh, had a had that comedy moment. I just to share that final thing on the Saturday. Once uh, so, me and Andy were going around as a, as a, as a little team, and we just decided that we were we'd finished. That was it, and that that we weren't going to do any more. I was with Piotr from uh, Polyend at the time, and uh, I said, "Right, this is what I'm going to do." And all my hair was out as normal. Whatever. I go right. What's this? I'm gonna tie my hair back, and no one. Because I mean, like like was happening f to Dave as well. I mean, thank you everyone for coming up. So many people came up to say hello and to and to thank us for. So I tie my hair back, going like now. Look at this. No one's gonna. No one is gonna recognise me. And at that precise moment, a blind man came up with a with a white cane. I said, hello, guys. <laughs> Just at that exact moment. <laughs> it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. So, uh, yeah. And you met yeah. Matt Johnson as well. Yeah, well, I, oh, I met Matt Johnson. Yeah, we both did. Wow. I, I got, you met him. I met him... Um, I, I met him initially because I back at, years ago I did a remix of Armageddon Days or Armageddon Times or Whoa. Armageddon Days a long time and he rang me up um, uh, it, f on a Saturday morning and I was working late nights I was doing sounding clubs and stuff and he woke me up on Saturday morning and said 
Yeah, I really like you to. Uh, what I really like is the bass drum sound on Tom's Diner. If you could use something along those lines, that would be great. And and I was just like, hey, yeah, great, lovely to talk to you. And uh, you know, Matt Johnson back then was really massive, and I loved his stuff. But I was completely. And uh, then when I was at the show, uh, it's, I think it's uh, Steve D'Agostino, who's uh, a Berlin resident, said, "Do you want to meet Matt?" And I said, "You know what? I do because I've actually met him and worked with him, but he doesn't probably remember." And you're right, he didn't remember at all. <laughs> but we, we, he, he knew I was because he's, he's watched a couple of videos because he's still very interested in synthesizers and whatnot. And his parting words were, oh, yeah, you're right. You were really hung over. I remember now. <laughs> 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 I'm sure he was just pulling my leg because I don't remember being particularly hungover. Uh, but, yeah, that was good. Uh, yeah. So jolly good fun. I know you got the Jean-Michel Jarre moment, which was awesome. Um, and actually, that, that was, was another story because cool. cause you met you met Jean Michel Jarre, and then when I went to do Balor and the River, I said, you know, because uh, they're French, I said, oh, has, uh, has Jean Michel Jarre seen this? I mean, has he got one? And they went, oh, uh, no. And I was like, oh dear, I've, I've sort of touched a nerve. But then they pulled out a picture of Van Gelis playing it, and I was going, ooh, in the celebrity kind of synth <laughs> off stakes, yeah. who would win? Is it Van Gelis or Jean Michel Jarre? It's kind of a bit of a tough Jean one. Jean Michel there. Jarre. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, but it's, it's a, yeah, yeah. You're probably right. Yeah, so everyone had every in the seventies, didn't they? Everyone had oxygen and uh, equinox. I don't know. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah, he was really nice, Jean Michel. Though he was, he was yeah. really friendly and and, and also having a great time. And also, we all see him on video. And we think, yeah, there must be so much makeup and stuff because no one of his age <laughs> can look that good. But he really does, doesn't he? He's really, he's like he looks great. He looks great. Yeah, yeah. it's astonishing. <laughs> yeah. If I look half looks as good as that, me. yeah, well, better than most. Well, all of us, really, I would imagine. <laughs> so, uh, well, thank yeah. you, and thank you, Jim, for coming along and hanging out here. Jim, uh, if you're watching the show beforehand, the preamble, Jim was playing on the uh, Jupiter Six with the. Uh, in fact, I've got the. There it is. The Jupiter Six with the uh, the uh, with the. Uh, I think it's going through the Ventress. There's a few things we're yeah. trying there. That was good fun. But I hope you've had fun. And now you got to be on Sonic Talk as well. Uh, uh, yeah, and I've eaten English food. Yeah, we had a fried breakfast. And of course, the thing is now, if you've been telling people you've been away working, and they get th this will show up, and the dates will show, and they'll go, "Wait a minute." Yeah, I, I don't tell that people I'm working ever. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Dave, thank you for joining us as well. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, so thank you. We'll, uh, we'll hopefully see you soon. And if, you know, before next Super Booth, but certainly at next Super Booth as well, I hope. Right? Yeah. And thanks, okay. thanks everybody who came up and said hello. And it was brilliant to meet all of you and Jim, actually. It was really yeah. excellent. So, yeah, thanks. You're more than welcome. And, uh, Ben, lovely to see you. Although, again, we didn't really get, we did make it to that restaurant. I went to uh, Madame. Um, Madame Moms. Madame Moms. Yeah, Madame. Yeah, we made it and we did get some food, but you, you went to a different restaurant, so we blew it. No, we went there. <laughs> we must have missed each other. Ah, yeah. okay. Yeah, because the first year we went there, we went there every single day. Yeah, it's gone up a bit, hasn't it? It's a lot more pricey than it was when we first went. Yeah. It was really cheap, but it's jolly good food. Anyway, Ben, thanks ever so much. And of course, your videos are up on uh, Div Kid Video channel on YouTube, right? Yeah, yeah we have we're a good handful on, but there'll be about 50 over the coming weeks. Um, in the next week or two. So, yeah, plenty from us as well. Excellent. Well, I do check that out uh, for more modular focus stuff. And Gaz, lovely to have you. Nice to see you're back on the mend because uh, no one likes a flu. Yeah. I, it's going to well, take a while, I mean, though. You never you never do, you're never going to get that far. This this turned up today. Oh, my so this, goodness. This has made me happy. Yeah. Excellent. So it's, is so that the music? The new, is that the, new, the, what's that? The Sting, what, what is it? Music maker? Stingray. Ooh. Yeah, the new Stingray. Yeah, so it's pretty awesome. Excellent. But, um, well, everybody could be happy. We got stuff. Yeah. Uh, as far as I'm going, I'm, my next my next thing to review is the uh, Radical Technologies Delta Sep, which is uh, York Shaft. Oh, you know. so cool! So I'm looking forward to that. I'll be checking that out. So yeah, Jim, thank you very much for joining us, and Dave, and. Ben and Gaz. It's been great. I, I'm going to do a four up, but it won't work because there's five of us. So we have to imagine if Jim, Jim, actually, you could, you could just come into the shot. Then, then we could all wave <laughs> yeah. together. So thanks everybody. Thanks for watching this time. We'll see you around. Uh, see you next time. Bye bye.